Women Innovators. Interviews with women with big messages and big missions, sharing their stories to inspire you to live your passion and step up to make the world a better place. Here's your host, Tammy Patzer. Hi, everyone. This is Tammy Patzer, and I'm excited to welcome back Desi Coster. Desi is a Trivedi healer who is committed to applying her gift of harnessing, transmitting, and infusing life force energy to living organisms and non-living materials anywhere in the world through her thought intention to transform and optimize the potential of their inherent nature. Desi's lifelong mission has been to help people obtain optimal health and wellness for themselves as an individual, for their career and business, and for their family and community, and for the environment in which we live. And I'm going to put more information about Desi up on the website so you can read it. But I want to really get into today's topic because... It is something especially of interest to women, but it's equally of interest to men. And Desi's just recently published a blog called How to Get Your Sexy <laughs> Back. So this is a little disclaimer. Um, it obviously, um, we're going to be talking about sex and sexuality And of course, that goes, um, it's equally important to both men and women. So with that, Desi, tell me more about this issue. And again, I think women, no matter what their age, you know, especially, you know, you go through all of these different things. And if you're in a relationship, if you're not in a relationship, um, our sexuality is, is part of us. It's part of human beings. So yeah. tell me more about um, why this is so important and more about um, what you, you know, what you think about this issue. Sure, I'd be delighted. So as you said, you know, sexuality is a very important part of who we are as human beings. It's, it's a way to express ourselves. It's a way to connect with our partner. It's, it's a way that we can communicate what we're feeling without even actually saying anything. It brings us closer. It enhances our relationship. And it's something, especially when we're first in a relationship with our partner, and, and it doesn't matter, you know, this is our partner could be opposite sex partner could be same sex partner you know i'm not here to say it, it should be this or that this is this is not about that but it's looking at when we're first in that relationship you know it it there is this spark there's a magnetism and and often it's at the peak of of how we connect but over time this can change and for some people those changes it can be purely because Perhaps their their drive or how they're feeling changes, but it can also be an indication that something's going on with their health and well being. So what's important is is to if you're noticing that things have changed and you're not happy with what's going on, then you know it's like well take part because you know, we can take stock and then just stop and then take a snapshot of what's actually going on and then follow up with a plan of action of how to deal with it because that's really important. I I think that's really good advice because, again, you know, it could be a hormonal issue. Yes. Aging, it could be you just don't feel like it, or maybe your relationship has changed. I mean, there's so yeah. many reasons for it, and taking that evaluation, I think, is really important. Yeah. So, so how would you go about um, doing that? that? Yeah. So one of the things that I said in the blog, I I think it's very important to to have 
a preliminary set of questions and the questions that I have in the blog are not, you know, that's not the only questions you can ask, but it's a really great place to start. So you start looking at questions relating to things like your health. So are you taking any type of medication? Are you going through any physical changes when it comes to your health? You know, are you pregnant? Are you going through menopause? Um, are there any other major health issues that you're dealing with? It could also be related to a body image. So another thing might be, for example, you know, has your body changed? Have you lost weight or gained weight? So do you have, um, you know, do you love the way you look and the way you feel? Because for some women, if they don't love the way they look, that can seriously impact the way they interact with their partner. So it could be something to do with that. Are you getting enough rest and sleep? Are you going through some type of stress or anxiety? Have your life circumstances changed? Are you going through divorce? Um, do you have a number of children, you know, under a certain age? So, you know, have you changed jobs, quit jobs, moved your physical vicinity? All of these things have an impact. Has, has somebody in your family, you know, are they ill or has somebody in your family passed away? So by, by taking a look at all of these different things, and asking yourself, okay, what's going on in my life right now? That's going to kind of give you a baseline of, all right, this is what's going on. And then you can compare it. What was my relationship like, you know, my, my sexual relationship, how I interacted with my partner? How did it used to be? What's it like right now? What's going on right now? And then where would I like it to be? So what we're doing in this first little section is gathering information. Another thing could be that, that sex is uncomfortable or painful. Again, due to hormonal changes and imbalances, we might find that there is dryness happening. And, you know, the beautiful thing about sexuality and, and making love and being with your partner is, is that intimacy. Intimacy is a very important part of our connection. But if the intimacy is uncomfortable in some way, then you're not going to want to be intimate. As much as you love your partner or, and they love you and, and you want to be, but if it's hurting you, you're not going to want to do that. So, you know, it can happen during menstrual time. It can be when we go through stress that can have an impact. Uh, it can be because we're going through menopause or we're aging. It might be during pregnancy. So by, by having an understanding of what's going on, then, of course, you can go and speak with your gynecologist, your healthcare practitioner, and then say, look, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what's happening. And there are so many great things out there that, that you can use that will help you so that you can get back to how it was. I, I know for a lot of women, they're ashamed about what's going on or, you know, I'm not functioning well. And this is not about being ashamed or being uncomfortable. You have to be courageous and you have to be able to share it with somebody. And, you know, your doctor, your gynecologist or a health practitioner, there's somebody that you can confide in. And once you know that you've got that, you know, somebody that can help you, it can be something that's very simple, really easy, and that can, you know, take care of what's going on. Well, there's, like, just listening to you, I'm, I'm going, oh, my goodness, there's so many things that can affect how you feel, you know. Yeah. You look at your life over, you know, the ebbs and flows of life, like if you've had children, if you haven't had children, just the the romance, the stress, like you, you mentioned what is going on in your life because sometimes mm. people, they don't even realize how stressed out they are over something that is, that is outside of their relationship. Yes. And they think that something's wrong with the relationship, but it's really not the relationship at all. It, it's all these exterior factors that, that, that are going on. Mm. So, once you've asked all these questions and, and you've got this baseline and you have asked all these preliminary questions, 
then what do you do to find <laughs> solution? Because obviously yeah. that's what we're looking for. So this is, this is, you know, the second part. And, and this is where you create a plan of action. Your plan of action should be looking at what can you do as far as coming up with the solutions? And it, and it might be that you've got a series of people that you're going to interact with that will help you come up with solutions or you get to stop and get to be a little bit, of, bit creative as well. So this is where you get to look at, for example, if you're finding you and your partner have not been intimate for a while and you look at what's going on, then you get to, you know, schedule things like date nights or go away for a great weekend or you get to do an activity, some kind of intimacy activity or some kind of activity where it kind of sparks that, that lovely feeling. And it could be you go and do salsa or tango classes together. You go and get something like a his and her massage. You might want to go and do a tantra class together or some other you know, loving touch class where you get to work on each other. So this way you're together, you're outside what's been going on, and you get to connect in, in a different way, in a new way. It's also about being willing to be open to new experiences and checking in with your partner. Or if you want to have something that's fun, find out what they'd like to do. And then do something where that you both like to do together. So these are some of the things. And like I said, you know, if, if there's anywhere where you think, you know, something's going on physically, always, always go and get a medical checkup because that's the first thing. We, we, want, to, we want to make sure it's, there's not some kind of medical, emotional medical reason of what's going on. And if there is, find out what's going on and then follow up and get whatever you need from your practitioner. Uh, then you can start looking at, well, what are some other things? For example, when you've got little kids, sleep, you know, sleep, I, after working with so many mums, sleep is like, what's sleep? You know, you don't, you don't get to rest. I mean, you know, so you don't get to rest. So it's looking at who might be able to help you. It could be a family member, a babysitter, or somebody that can, can, can take the kids or give you a little bit of space, could be you know, the grandparents that have the kids, so you get just a little spot to rest, sleep, and replenish. Or it might be you tweak your habits. So instead of attempting to get rest at night, if your baby is having a sleep in the afternoon, that's when you're having a rest. So every time your baby or your young child has a rest, okay, you're down. So that you, you get a little bit of rest to, to, be, to be able to help. So this is looking at what are my circumstances. If I can get somebody else to step in, great. But you might be a single mom and you don't have any help. So if that's the case, how can you tweak what's going on in your environment so that you can get little sections of rest to help support you. So just, just, just little things like that. And, you know, like I said, if you're finding that you're not as intimate with your partner, but you'd like to be, and you're noticing that that's happened less and less, then take some time out where the two of you can do some nice things together. You know, do some fun activities. Even if you go for a walk together and hold hands, go for a drive somewhere. You know, do something where you get to just be. Uh, and like I said, you know, if you can go away for a weekend, great, do that. And then do things that you both like doing where you can bring some of that spark back into the relationship. So that's the plan of action. It's where you get to look at what are some of the things that you can do in order to bring pleasure to each other, do more touching, have more intimate moments. And intimate moments is not necessarily, it doesn't even have to be a sexual intimate moment. Intimacy can just be hugging, connecting, holding hands, looking into each other's eyes. It's about connecting. As human beings, 
touch is vitally important for our survival. They did experiments with young, you know, baby chimpanzees. And what they did was, for some of them, they were separated from their mother and they were not touched at all. And those, you know, those, those baby chimpanzees or baby monkeys, they died. So we, we require touch as, a, you know, just to evolve and, and, and to feel like we are loved and cared for. So that's something that's important. And we think touch is, you know, like the physical touch, but touch can also be we're touched by caring words. We're touched by somebody looking at us and paying attention. We're touched by somebody listening and speaking in a certain way, tone and manner to us. So we're touched in a number, of, uh, a number of ways. So if you take time out to be caring and loving, then that's really supportive. So there are some of the things that, that you can do. And another thing, um, you know, another thing is, you know, like I mentioned, you can do, you can do couples massage, you know, you can, you can maybe have the, you know, if you've got little kids, wait till after they go to sleep or again, get somebody to take care of the kids for, for a little while and then just connect, get some massage oil and, and do something that's loving. And it might just be a little foot massage for each other, or it might be, you know, a whole body massage. But again, just take the time out to connect. Another fantastic way of connecting is, is life, you know, life force energy healing because that's something that deepens and enhances our connection, it can, our connection with the divine. It also helps our connection with the people that we love. It supports our relationship with the people that we love and care about the most. So that's something else that we can incorporate as part of our plan of action is getting that so it it helps reduce stress. It helps bring more joy, more clarity, more peace. It reduces things like anxiety. So, and, and it, it, it boosts our health and well being and, and our level of immunity. So, by feeling healthier, more vital, and have a, a better sense of health, gives us greater self confidence, then we're going to feel better about ourselves. And of course, we're going to feel better about how we relate to each other. And then I guess one final thing is, let's say you've got something related to your body image. Um, one of the things that I have a background in as well is I've you know, trained as a personal trainer. I'm certified as a personal trainer, a weight loss specialist, uh, a fitness and nutrition specialist. And we all have to start somewhere. If you found, for example, that you've gained a lot of weight, you might feel a little bit uncomfortable about the way you look. And you might you know, you might not have the confidence. So again, this is where you, you stop and you take stock. So find something you do love about yourself, your eyes, your face, your skin, something, and fall in love with that. And then do something that can help you little by little get into a better level of health. Tweak what you're eating. Drink more water. Start moving a little bit more. It's not going to, you know, happen overnight. If you have to lose 100 pounds or 50 pounds, that's not going to disappear in a week. But be patient with yourself, be loving with yourself, and do the action steps. You might want to get a personal trainer, or you might want to get your favorite music, dance around the house, you know, whatever. Because, the, you know, when you're dancing or singing and doing something like that or, or put on a great video, uh, where you can move to, you feel good. As soon as you move, it, it starts. It starts creating a cascade of those endorphins, which are the you know the the feel good um, chemicals in our system that make us happy. And then little by little over time, you'll feel good. You'll have more confidence. Your body will start getting into better shape, and you'll start falling more and more in love with yourself. So there are some of the key things that you can do as far as setting out a plan of action. So that's, that's step number two. Well, that's really interesting because even though, you know, technically we started out talking about getting your sexy back, it really is about connecting 
um, yes. in all ways, spiritual yes. and with other people and, and your partners, and especially with yourself. Yes. I think that that's the biggest issue that most people forget about is that they need to take care of themselves and have yes. that spiritual connection, divine connection within themselves before they can have these deep interpersonal relationships yes. with other people and other beings. And sometimes I think we forget that. And, and just talking to you today really m- reminded me of, you know, when you say the word sexy, it, it's all a state of being. Yes. And it transcends sex. Because yes. as you said, it, it's about that intimacy, that touch, that enjoying or yes. enjoyment of, you know, this other person that mm. you're wanting to be with. And like you said, just touch. Yes. Doing things together that, that are fun because it, it made me think about, you know, past relationships. And, and if you're not happy just in the day life sex isn't going to save the relationship (laughs) it's all interconnected but if you're unhappy uh, in in your regular communications and that like you said just that hanging out or doing things together the sex in the bedroom it's going to decline because Mm. it's just mechanical yes Uh, absolutely and sex is something you know as women you know men and women the way we relate sexually is different we just we just do for women our sexuality is very much connected to our heart how we're feeling and our emotions that doesn't mean to say we can't you know we can't have a very powerful just erotic sexual experience whether it's with our own self or whether it's with our partner but for us to maintain that over time there needs to be more than just you know the fireworks there's got to be something that connects us and this is something and this is from a from um an ayurvedic point of view there is a quality uh, it is it is related to our emotional heart our emotional heart is known as sadaka and sadaka has its quality is to do with the fulfillment of desire and there is this when when we connect with some somebody there is this it is known as sneha sneha is like this glue and when we connect with somebody that we love, whether it's our partner, our children, our parents, or, you know, the divine, whatever it is, it is almost like this, this thread, this, this glue that connects us. And that's part of that experience. So when, when, we, when we're making love and when we're intimate there is that connection there's also that connection with our you know like with our with our mind with our spirit and so there are a number of different ways how we connect with our partner and the more we open and the more connected and the more that we are connected within ourself the more powerful our connection is with the person that we're intimate with and that only deepens and enhances that relationship more and more wow that's really beautiful so so basically with this you you review you look at what's going on in your life and then of course you make a plan of plan of action yes just and then rinse and repeat. <laughs> yeah. Then the next thing is you've got to execute your plan. Because again, a lot of people say, yes, I'm going to do it. Gee, it'd be really great if we did a partner's massage course. But they never do it. Or it'd be great if we had, you know, a weekend away where we get to be intimate and do all the things that we love together. But you never schedule. You never go away. So it's vitally important. It's one thing to say you're going to do something, but then you must execute it. 
And then once you've executed, you do a review because you get to try it out. You might be trying out a whole series of new things, something you've never tried out before. What's really important is that you have an open mind and a great sense of humor because that's vitally important in your relationship. And be kind to yourself because some of the things you might try, it might be horrible. There might be some other things that you try and, and test out that's fantastic and it, and it, and it creates fireworks in, in the relationship, creates spark and fun and amazing intimacy and, and joy in the relationship. So review when you test something out, see what it's like at the end of the week. See where you are at the end of the month. Are you moving towards the outcome you want? Are you creating more intimacy, more joy? Are the way you and your partner relating, has that improved? Or is it moving in the opposite direction? And then if it's, if it's moving in the way you want to, continue what you're doing. If not, make the course corrections. This is not about being right or wrong. This is about playing in that field of your normal, healthy, natural self-expression. For women, for example, sometimes women in their 20s, because they're not as sure of them sexually, they might not be as adventurous, or they may be. However, when women turn 50 or 60 and they're no longer they're no longer having to go through menstruation and then premenstrual tension, all that drama, their sex drive increases. Now, for other women, they're, oh, my God, they're the opposite. But everybody's different. You know, some women, they get to a point, it's like, if I never have sex again, that's fine. For other women, it's like they love being sexually active. So you've got to look at what is the baseline for you. You cannot compare it to anybody else. And then what works for you and your partner? Because that's very important as well. It's about, you know, ultimately it's about being loving and caring because that really supports that sexuality. And the more that you have that, then you get to be creative, you get to experiment, you get to explore and have fun with what you're doing and test out other things that you've not done before. Wow. Well, we've covered a lot of <laughs> in this. And I want to make sure that people know how they can contact you because, again, the, the divine energy blessings and the Trivedi effect, it can work on all areas of your yes. life. Yeah. And, and um, it's, it's such a positive type of energy. So, Desi, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, um, how can they do that? Sure. So uh, they can, you know, they can go to my website, uh, which is www.desicosta.com. Um, they can call me on my phone. It's it's um, 707-702-3394. And of course, they can email me, which is desi at desicosta.com. So, you know, any of those ways they can, you know, they can opt into the website and, and uh, you know, just want to learn more. And, of course, they can reach out. And I'm, and I'm on all the social media as well. So they can always drop me a line, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Tumblr, um, Twitter. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty much everywhere. Yeah. So before I let you go, is there anything else that you'd like to remind people? Yeah, here's, here's the final thing. It's, you know... Once you do the, the, the course correcting, if you're finding that, that, you know, if you're not getting what you want, don't be disheartened. There are so many wonderful things out there. There's so much that you can do, so much incredible information on the internet where you can get educated. The other thing is, the thing about relationships is it's about, how much are you investing in yourself and in your relationship? The more you put in, the more you get out. 
So if you're willing, regardless of whether you've been married for five minutes or 50 years, some of, some of the amazing things that I've seen is with people that have been married for, you know, I, I've, I've met people that have been married for like 50 and 60 years, which is like, oh my God, that, that to me is such an incredible thing. And they are in, as in love with each other as when they first met and they, you know, they hold hands and they cuddle up and they kiss each other. And it's just so beautiful because they're affectionate. They're there. That connection is there. And just realize that things change over time, but that doesn't mean to say that you can't have a more beautiful relationship over time. Just because you you have gone through changes, your relationship can still go through beautiful transformations and get deeper and richer. And if you're willing to always invest in what you have in yourself, in your partner, and making that you know, something that's important, then it will only give back to you. So that's, that's you know, that's, well, I that's think my that's last words. <laughs> because I think you're absolutely right. When you go through time and invest in that mm-hmm. energy into another person or into your life together and you're interested in it, you can really create something very beautiful that, yeah. you know, just makes living, you know, better each and every day. No question. And I, and I might share one more thing because my, you know, my life partner who passed away in 2012, I am so grateful because one of the things that he and I did was we always set time aside to have special quality time together. I mean, I had no idea that he was going to pass away, you know, within three years of, of our relationship. So it wasn't very long. But it was such a deep and loving and beautiful relationship. And I am so grateful that we did that because we got to do everything that we'd ever wanted. And we don't know. You can be with somebody for 50 years. You might be with somebody and they're taken out of your life in two minutes. There's no guarantee. But if you make the most of what you have, then when life happens, you've got something beautiful that you had and something that you can cherish after they're gone. That's so beautiful. Well, thank you so much. And remember, everybody, reach out to Desi Coster. It's desicoster.com. Mm-hmm. You can find her on social media. Read her blog. She <laughs> she writes very good, very detailed, rich blogs, and this is just one of them. So go check out her website, DesiCoster.com. Yeah. Thank you so much, Desi. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Tammy. That's great. <laughs> Everyone, this is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. You've been listening to Women Innovators with Tammy Patzer. To learn more, please go to womeninnovatorsradio.com. And please do subscribe and share to spread the big messages and big missions to change the world.